welcome back where we've just watched Italy putting on a masterclass. Damien, 10 wins in a row, 10 consecutive clean sheets and it feels like the perfect 10 performance by Italy tonight. Yeah, it was top class, Jackie. Uh, I was impressed with every facet of their game, the way they moved the ball, the way they press. When they lose the ball, win it back. Just the intensity that they, they, they do everything. Um, and like I said, at half time, it's a team without superstars. Um, like 29 unbeaten, 10 without conceding a goal. Incredible. Uh, will Chiellini be fit for the next game? We don't know. They're absolutely relentless. It was a top watch. Yeah, it really was. They scored some great goals. Locatelli, his second goal in the second half, equally as impressive as his first, Liam. Yeah, he took it well. He's two-footed, isn't he? You know, he's mainly right-footed, but it's, he's, his pass in the first half that led to his goal was with his left foot, and this is with his left foot as well. There's a great little run here for people watching at home. There's a great little run here by Immobile. There he goes, and he creates the space for Locatelli, and boom! Reminiscent of Marco Tardelli's strike in the 1982 World Cup final, Jackie. You're too young to remember that. <laughs> uh, but what a great goal and uh, good celebration as well. Yeah, he certainly took it well. I tell you, he's going to get a big money move this summer. He's the third Italian player to score a brace. He's only 23. He's... Yeah, he's at an unfashionable club called Sassuolo. So you can imagine Juventus, AC Milan, Inter Milan or even Premiership teams. Looking yeah. at that lad, he's big and strong, he never stops working. Well, you mentioned Immobile in the first one. He got the, set, he got the third goal and was heavily involved, wasn't he? Yeah, he was starting to look a frustrated figure. Um, he does get, there is a lot of pressure on him in Italy, um, but I was pleased for him to get the goal. The most impressive bit of this goal here is them winning the back, Toloi, number 25. Obviously a great strike, but this reaction here to win the back, and like I said before the game, he nearly scores in every game at the Stadio Olimpico, so you always have to expect an Immobile goal. Um, I know Liam was building a case against him uh, during the game, but uh, listen, is he top, top? Possibly not, but when you look at his stats at Lazio for the past three, four years, his stats are ridiculous. Yeah, he definitely did that. We might have a chat about what else he did a little bit later on, but let's talk about some of the other brilliant aspects of what we saw. Their passing, like even off air, you were just in awe about what they were doing, Damien. Yeah, it was fantastic, Jackie. You could have built a 10, 20 minute clip, but listen, I won't bore you with that. But just fantastic to watch. Oh, short little passes, people, I guess, connecting with people, opening up their bodies. Just simple, simple stuff that. I don't know, you're even coaching in passing drills, but just their feel of a ball, first touch, setting it up to move away from pressure. Absolutely brilliant, so easy to watch, and all of a sudden you've broken lines and you're up the pitch within five, six passes. And this was a constant throughout the game tonight, always starting with Donnarumma, happy to invite pressure, happy to take the ball under pressure. And like I said, here you have Jorginho, who's not, you know, renowned for his legs. He's driving up the pitch uh, because he's free, because they've beaten their press. So... Interested to see, yes, another step. Can they do it against the bigger, better teams when they go further on the competition? OK, it doesn't work there. But absolutely a top-class watch. Um, similar to Spain, who you could argue lack a cutting edge at the minute, but Italy certainly don't. And all of that passing, Liam, a lot of it starts at the back, but it's built around that Italian midfield, and you were really impressed with them as well tonight. Yeah, all three of them uh, complement one another. Uh, very organised. Uh, this is the lad Barella. He had a big move to uh, Inter Milan, won the title this year with Inter Milan. He's all action, good passer, good all round. Watch him, watch him break out here. Here I go. I'm going to drive up right up the pitch. And then pays it simple. He also works hard when the opposition have the ball. Uh, watch him chase this down. Gets it. He doesn't give up. He goes again. And he actually puts pressure on the Swiss player there, so he gives the ball to Insigne. Now, this is Locatelli's goal. We've seen this a few times now in the first half. He was the one that played a magnificent pass out to the wing and then break neck, breaks his neck to get into the box and finish. Uh, Jorginho shields that back four. Good tackler as well. Um, always available for the ball. Uh, breaks play up as well, and an excellent passer. We know we know at Chelsea he's, he's, he's such a good passer, but he's the one that sits in front of that back four, particularly the two centre backs, and makes sure that the centre forward, the opposition centre forward, doesn't get that ball to feet. He really shields shields very very well. So the three of them 
are complementing one another brilliantly. And whether Verratti, Marco Verratti, who is probably their star midfield player, whether he can get back in this team or not will remain to be seen. I tell you what a great um, conundrum for Roberto Mancini to have. And look, every line it seems Damien complements each other and all of that starts at the back with their goalkeeper. He was brilliant tonight as well. Yeah, he was top class. Uh, what fascinated me before the game reading about him is he's on a free transfer in two weeks on July the 1st. Uh, incredible. He's been AC Milan number one since he was 16. He's now 22. Um, I'm thinking in the Premier League, Premier League, who's looking for a goalkeeper? One that jumps out at me is Man United. De Gea can't last much longer. Henderson, not good enough. Suppose the biggest club in the world. Can you go break the bank and get him? Uh, sticking point, Mini Rayola, who uh, is Pogba's agent. Um, obviously had a few run-ins with Man United. But this goalkeeper here could be your number one for the next 20 years. He's 22. He's the heir to Buffon's throne. Buffon, I think, is 42. So there's a 20-year difference. Keepers now, the longevity, they can go on and on and on. But you can see this lad's quality, 22 years of age, and he's been a number one already for six years. So I'll throw it out there, Man United fans, go get him. He's on a free transfer. See how composed he is, though, Liam. Like, even yeah, off there, you were saying, for that age. And he's such a big man. You yeah. wouldn't think he would be so adept with his feet, but he's, he's excellent, you know. And, he, and, to, and to, to, to be able to pass it like that, you, you have to see all the pitch, you know. So he's obviously... Very talented boy, you know, very talented lad. Big future ahead of mm. him. All right, Immobile, let's get stuck into him now because we were building the case against him and then he went uh, well, and scored the goal. I'm nitpicking, uh, Jackie. I was saying, well, we were having the discussion while we were watching the match, you know, is he top, top notch and will he make Italy champions of this tournament? I don't I think you really need a centre forward with X Factor. I don't think he's a Benzema, I don't think he's a Mbappe, I don't think he's a Lukaku. And whilst I was saying all those things to you, <laughs> you he went and smashed one in the net. You yeah. know what I mean? So, and he's got two goals and two games. I just think he's not star quality. What do you think, Maybe, maybe a bit harsh, but there you go. Oh, I, I possibly agree with Liam, he's not, but you know, he's not easy on the eye maybe at times, but he's always on the last line, he's always to run in behind. The two chances just five minutes prior to his goal is him in a nutshell, doesn't get really involved in, in build-up, um, but his movement is top class. Again, I talked about with Serbi, uh, Europa League, we played Lazio twice, he scored against us uh, with Celtic and he's always pulling off the shoulder. He'll get chances and he is going to be their leading striker in the tournament because I don't see anyone else in the squads that can come in and replace him. So I think Liam will be stuck with him. Yeah, <laughs> have, we see, have we got his missus? Yeah, we have a couple of chances <laughs> yeah, from him. You can have a look yeah. and Well, see this is him. what I'm talking about. This is why I brought it up, you know. But he's, he gets away from, takes up a good position, gets it away from the Swiss defence there. But he's, he's well wide with that shot and he's well off the mark with this one as well. Well, I suppose if you're if you're not in a position, you can't you know, you, 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 you you can't win the raffle. You know what I mean? You have to have a ticket. So he's getting in there so many times, but um, I, I just feel he's not the quality that will get you the the championship. Yeah, and look, I suppose it is, as you say, Liam, look, it's nitpicking, but we are still watching, perhaps in a lot of ways, the performance of the tournament. Like, this Italian team are laying down markers. They did it in the first game, which you were on. They've done it again. So it's easy for us to nitpick because it was the only thing they did wrong, really. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's almost, we've, we've watched them twice now, and they've almost been perfect performances, you know, from every aspect of playing football, defence, Midfield prey, brilliant. Damien's highlighted how well they passed the ball. One and two touch. Nobody really takes more than two touch, particularly in defence or in midfield. They get the ball out to uh, Berardi and Insigne and they can take people on. They really are a complete team. One concern for them could be that injury to Kalini. We don't know. I mean, we did see him holding his left high. As you mentioned, he's 36 years of age. How big of a miss would he be if they are to play the rest of the tournament without him? Absolutely massive. Um, I don't think age comes in, into it with him. He just he reads the game so well. He's never really relied on great speed or anything like that. He's just a world-class defender. Likewise, Benucci beside him. As I touched on at half-time, I would worry about his replacement. Um, and I also would worry about that will he be able to recover in time because the next game is, what, four or five to uh, days' time. Muscular injury, possibly won't uh, be back, so it might be further into the tournament where he might oh, see him oh, again. Oh, they need him badly. Yeah, they need yeah. him badly. 
there's a great spirit in that team and he's the real leader of it, you know. You can see when they score a goal, even the subs bench are going crazy, aren't they? When Locatelli was taken off, they're all up standing, clapping their teammates. Yeah. He's, Mancini's really got something good going there. Yeah, but I mean, look, even with that in mind, this is, this is a team people want to watch. We know that that one now is going to be to see who tops the table, but they just have everything going. For yeah, they want to top the table. I've been looking and I think maybe Austria or Ukraine, they could come up with them because either one of them are going to finish second in the group. I think I think Netherlands will win that group. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's a real incentive for, uh, for Italy to, to, to top the group because if they get Austria and they, or, or Ukraine, I think they'll win that match. Last word to you, Damien, on a brilliant night for Italy. No, top team. Um, really, really impressed with the team in the tournament so far for me. And their goals just seem to be getting better and better. Yep, they definitely do.